All right, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how we can build out a UI table view in Swift. It's gonna be really short and simple, and um, it's gonna give you a good foundation for table views. And then in future videos, I'll show you how we can build uh, other cool things, okay? So what I want you to do is go and create a single view app and call it UI table view or whatever you want. Put it on the desktop or wherever you wanna store it and go to the view controller.swift and get rid of this nasty comment, okay? So didn't really do much except for start a project and got, got rid of the comment, okay? Um, so feel free to pause and get to this point. In all my videos, this is how I'll start. So if you ever just click one of my videos, just get to this point and then we're ready to start, okay? So let's build this and see what it looks like. And while it's building, let's just go ahead and uh, type out our uh, table view here. So I'll do it outside of the view did load, I'll say let TB is equal to UI table view. And um, let's just get this constrained on the screen with auto layout constraints and then let's put an image view on it, okay? So let's go ahead and say um, self.view.add sub view and then we'll say TB and then we'll say tb.translates auto resizing mask into constraints is equal to false. This is basically just gonna allow us to use auto layout constraints uh, without Basically, uh, I mean, just using code. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is say tv.topanchor.constraint. If I, what the, topanchor.constraint, and we'll say is equal to uh, view.topanchor, okay? And then we'll say dot is active is equal to true. Okay, let's copy this line three more times. So we'll say one, two, three, and we'll name this left anchor. We'll say equal to view dot left anchor, and we'll say right anchor, and we'll say right anchor, and then we'll say bottom anchor, and then we'll say bottom anchor. Okay, so just get this code in. Feel free to pause it right now. I'll give you little moments where you can pause it and then uh, get everything in. So this is one of them. Just get this all in, and uh, yeah, go ahead. Once you have that in, just rebuild it, and we should see a table view on the screen, maybe. And if we don't, we'll uh, just continue, keep going. Okay, so we have our table view. I don't know if you can see these lines, but there should be lines. Okay, now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to basically get some data in there using UI table view delegate and data source, mostly data source. But let's go ahead and conform to those protocols. So let's type them in up here. Let's say comma UI table view delegate and UI table view data source. If you run the application here, it's gonna break. Now, if you don't understand how delegates like protocols and junk work, um, don't even worry about it, just copy what I'm doing and then we'll talk a bit about it um, in the description and, well, not the description, but basically as you come to use these more, you'll uh, understand it. I'll make a video explaining deep the concepts here, but this video, I wanna focus on how you can use these, okay? So it basically says you, it doesn't conform to the to the uh, UI table view data source and uh, delegate. Actually, I don't even think you need delegate for this anymore, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is basically provide the number of rows, right? So that's how many we have, right? So like, uh, for example, like one, two, three, you know, rows, okay? So let's go ahead and just return four. And then let's say in our code, uh, cell for row at, let's just say let cell is equal to table view dot DQ reusable cell um, with identifier. And we'll just say cell. And then we'll say for index path, index path. We're getting this index path from the method, from the function, right? And then we're just gonna return the cell, okay? And then let's say cell.text label question mark, because we don't know if the text label exists, even though it does, because it's a default table view cell. We're gonna say dot text is equal to, and we'll just say hello, okay? If we reload this page, this is what we're gonna get. Or not page, uh, if we uh, recompile our app, you'll see that we don't have our, our uh, text in our table view. And that's just because we haven't set the data source of our table view. So what we need to do in our view did load is we need to say tb dot data source is equal to self, okay? Now, if we reload our application, what you're gonna see is text that says hello everywhere, all right? So the next step is basically making it so it's custom. And there is an error and it's because we didn't register the cell. So you're, you're gonna get that error and then that error is gonna say, It'll say in here, um, unable to DQ a cell with identifier cell. Must register a nib or class for the identifier or connect the prototype cell and storyboard. And since we don't use storyboards because they're from the devil, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say in here, tb.register 
we're going to say cell class. That's going to be UI table view cell since we're just using the default one dot self. And then we're going to say for identifier cell. Okay. So as you can see, these two match up that on line 38 and that on 18. Okay. They match up and they need to match up or it's not going to work. Okay. So now you'll see that we have our four little uh, strings here, right? So the next step in doing this is in getting it the way we want is getting custom data in there by, by providing some data to our method here, right? So it's pretty simple because basically index path, if we console log it, or if we print it rather, if we say print and we say index path, let's go ahead and reload our application and notice the console when you do that. You're going to see that it has a property of row and and uh, you're just going to see it has two, right? You're, you're going to have the section and then the row, right? So for, we're all, we are only in one section. We, we haven't, we're not even going to talk about sections, but we just have one section, okay? But you'll notice that this section also has rows, right? So zero, one, two, three. So if we get this data, we can basically say index path dot row, and we can use that data to basically uh, uh, get some data out of an array, right? Or a key value uh, dictionary, right? In this case, just a basic array with keys being indexes and values being whatever we put in there. So let's go ahead and create that data by saying let data is equal to an array. This is going to contain, I don't know, uh, my Instagram.com slash max codes and then my other Instagram.com slash code homie and then my Twitter, Twitter.com slash max codes one. You should tweet the max codes guy and give him my tell him to give him give me his name because i don't like being max codes one anyway what we're gonna do is we're gonna say um let's put in yeah that's good for now and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say cell dot text label dot text is equal to not hello but data at index path dot row now if you run this it's gonna crash and i'll tell you why after it crashes right so let's run it, run it, run it. It's going to crash. It's going to look like it's working, but then it crashes, right? So zero, one, two, and then it crashes on the, the fourth one, right? Technically fourth, third one though. All right. So the reason is because it says fatal error index out of range. And it's because we returned four here, but we only have three in our data, which means when it gets to the fourth one, it tries to get the fourth one in here and it just doesn't work because we don't have anything there. If we put in another one like ASDF, and we reload this, it's going to work, right? But we might not always um, know the size of our data, right? We might fetch this data from the internet, and we might just want it to work no matter how many are in here, right? So let's just say we only want three. We're going to have to change this to three, or we're just going to have to say data.count, and that's going to basically give, it, give us our modularity, okay? So we can just add in custom data whenever we want, right? So basically, that's how you do that. Um, uh, let's just throw an image view on here and let's be done. Okay. So let's throw an image view on the top here and it's not going to be using the table view, although you can put it in the table view. If you do it right, we're just going to throw an image on there and then I'll show you how to do that in a different video. So we'll say IV for image view is equal to UI image view. And what we're going to do is go in here and we're going to say self dot view dot add sub view. And we'll say IV. And then we'll say IV dot translates auto resizing mask and constraints is false. And then what I'm going to do is just copy all these junkers right here and paste them here. Right. And then let's just replace all of these TVs with IV. And then let's think about these constraints a bit. Okay. So the bottom anchor, we don't want this to go to the bottom. Otherwise it's going to take up the whole screen. We just really want it to go to the TV dot top anchor. Okay. And then what we want to do that that should be good right but we'll have to declare a height as well so let's say iv dot height anchor dot constraint is equal to constant we'll just say 200 now we'll say 250 dot is active is equal to true and then what we're gonna have to do is look at these a little bit and we don't want these extending over or it's gonna hide our image view so what we're gonna do is say that the top anchor of the tb extends only to the image view dot bottom anchor and then let's reload our application and it's going to work except for we're not going to have an image. So while that's loading, I'm going to throw an image into my assets. Okay. It looks like we have an error real quick. Let's see what this says. It says that's illegal, bro. What? Okay. Let's look at our constraints. 
mm, tb.top anchor. So it's probably because I, I didn't add the sub view. Like I used the constraint before I added the sub view. So I'll put the sub view up here with IV, the adding of it. And then I'm gonna reload my application and then you're gonna see that it works. Okay. So yeah, there we go. It works, right? We have our image view, but it doesn't have anything in it. So let's throw an image in here really quick. I'm gonna go to my assets and then I'm gonna download this photo from my Unsplash page. I guess I should have put my Unsplash link if anything. Basically my Unsplash link is in unsplash.com slash at max codes. Don't forget the at. And then you can just get like an image off of here, like this one perhaps, and hit download. I took this picture today actually. Um, posted it on one of my Instagram accounts. And then what you wanna do is basically get the image. I'm just gonna call it max.jpg and I'm gonna throw it inside of my assets here, okay? Now this is a total optional step, but I think you're smart enough to figure it out or at least know that you wanna stop at this point if you don't wanna do this again. Now let's go ahead and let's say, okay, we're gonna say, IV dot image is equal to UI image. And we're gonna say, what is it? UI image named string. We're gonna say max.jpg or at least whatever you named it. And then let's just say IV dot content mode is equal to dot scale aspect fill. That's gonna make it look all right. It's not gonna stretch or anything. Ouch, my neck. All right, and then if we reload our application now, we're gonna get what we want, okay? Uh, I really hope this isn't going over 10 minutes, it probably is. And uh, there you go, well, that's what we have, all right? So really kind of a sick uh, setup. Um, and uh, yeah, just stay tuned for more content and we'll build off of this. I'll put it in like a series or something, UI table view series, and maybe I'll delete it at a point, but point is this is going in a series, all right? So I'll catch you in the next video. I'm gonna take a screenshot for the uh, for the freaking thumbnail, and then you can look at that. And then, yeah, I will catch you in the next video. See you guys later.